Welcome cold readers. For today's video, I wanted to try something completely different. So for those of you that are listening to us on the podcast, I'm sorry to say I'm going to shamelessly say, go to YouTube, look up cold read the podcast and find this episode because you're going to enjoy it with the visuals as much as you will with the audio. During the console wars between Nintendo, Sega, and PlayStation, there was a game for PlayStation that was released in 1996. This was called Resident Evil. And this game pretty much changed the face of survival horror in addition to changing the way that we pretty much played video games. No longer limited by 8-bit or 16-bit or sprites or two dimensions, we now had this 3D environment that we got to play with. But with that came the very beginnings of voice acting in video games. Now, of course, back then, people didn't exactly know what they were doing and really didn't know who to hire or, or what to do. So they pretty much went with the cheapest and easiest option. So in this case, it was more about getting things done, getting things done quick with what's available. So unfortunately, this game is famously known for how poorly the voice acting is. So I would like to present to you today a couple of attempts at correcting some of it. And keep in mind, I understand there has been remake after remake after remake of this particular series. But I wanted to do it with some of my friends. And this is what came up. So first I'm going to show you the original Jill sandwich scene. Hey, what's going on? Jill? Is that you, Jill? What happened? Perry, help me please. The door won't open. Quick! Stay away from the door, Jill. I'm gonna kick this door down. Hurry! This way! Oh, Barry! That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life. But, Barry, didn't you see you're going back to the dining room to do some research? Why on earth are you here? Uh, I just had something I wanted to check. Now, let's get back to searching for the lost captain and Chris, shall we? Thank you, Barry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, let's give that another crack. I never really minded Barry's acting as much as I did Jill's. Although there are a couple of cringy lines, and I'm sure that when we give it a shot, there's going to be some cringy lines on our side, too, because we didn't really change the writing at all, but we did want to try to correct the acting. So, here is Renara as Jill and myself as Barry. I hope you all enjoy. Hey, uh, what's going on? Jill? Is that you, Jill? What happened? Barry? Help me, please! The door won't open! Quick! Stay away from the door, Jill. I'm gonna kick this door down. Huh. Hurry! This way! Oh, oh, Barry. That was too close. <laughs> you were almost a Jill sandwich. Uh, you're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life. But... Barry, didn't you say you were going back to the dining room to do some research? Why on earth are you here? Uh, I just had something I wanted to check. Now let's get back to searching for the lost captain and Chris, shall we? And Barry, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Now, let me tell you, putting this thing together was... it, it was definitely difficult but at the same time it was a ton of fun so i couldn't stop sharing the wealth so i recruited two more people to help me out uh, and before i show you 
the product of that. Here is the original scene from Chris's point of view of Wesker's death. Is this? That's right. This is the ultimate life form. Tyrant. <laughs> Chris? <laughs> Stop it. Wesker, you're pitiful. This is your savior? You say this failure is your savior? You can make sure yourself whether Tyrant is a failure or not. Go to hell. Jill will join you too. What? Don't come this way! No! So maybe you all are starting to understand what we're saying here, but let's try this again, this time with some of our cold read friends. We're going to put El Dorino as Wesker and our good friend Raven Mane as Chris. Is this? That's right. This is the ultimate life form. Tyrant. Chris. Stop it! <laughs> Wesker, you're pitiful. This is your savior? You say this failure is your savior? <laughs> you can make sure yourself whether Tyrant is a failure or not. Jill will join you too. doing this well first off because i thought it'd be fun second off it's to show you that even when something is in its infancy stage the quality is never going to be anywhere near as good as it's going to be later on down the road so we all have to endure not being experts or being able to produce the top material from the get-go but i can guarantee you that as time goes on as experience is gained you will get there. So please continue to join us as we give you our experiences and we show you our infancy when it comes to a lot of things. And hopefully we can help some people along the way in showing them that this is a really, really fun profession to have. Even if you're a hobbyist. So let's enjoy the show, shall we? Take it away, me. 
awkwardly thank you so much me <laughs> so that was that was our our retake when it comes to uh resident evil Ooh, i forgot that the music was tied into that so let's do it this way <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen thank you so much welcome to co read the podcast this is the podcast by voice actors for voice actors uh we love to share our experiences as we go and hopefully you all can learn and not make the same mistakes or go through the same issues that we do uh, uh that was my intro and of course i'm gonna forget you know technical difficulties but it's all good. Um, thank you for those that came over from the podcast into YouTube. Hopefully you, you enjoyed that. Uh, you're welcome to go back to the podcast so our numbers don't fall over there. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> so as we do every particular week, I'd like to go ahead and check in with our hosts. Uh, so I will look at the other side of the world and ask, how goes that Platinum Jubilee over there, Renara? It's going, it's go, it's going. I'm not particularly actually watching it or being very patriotic currently, to be quite <laughs> fair. I have not watched a single thing other than the fact that I've seen that the Queen has worn her famous green screen suit at one point yesterday, I believe oh, it was, yay. which is going to be amazing. Yes. Um, oh. No, it's just, it, 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 it's a thing. It's it is happening. a thing. It's just, I'm not, I'm not a monarchist, so I'm not, I'm, it, I'm not too interested currently gotcha. really to be quite fair i've been Although, way too busy doing things the memes that are going to come out of the green screen dress is always a lot of fun yes, so i look I'm forward so to that excited. i swear she wears it simply because she now knows that that's going to happen now because she she, she is a she is a beast and i love i do love the queen i just don't put too much stock into it either way um it's been busy but i can't talk about it <laughs> if that makes sense okay it's the thing of like i have a thing i've been working on something which is like the, the boat two things that are like to do with me specifically but i don't really want to talk about them i've put an nda on myself about them because i'm like holding myself accountable to i'm gonna finish this off like this is gonna it's gonna get there and i don't want to start talking about it because that's how you kind of the, the steamboat kind of starts to slow down so sure. i'm kind of like okay i'm just gonna i'm gonna do it it's gonna happen i've also got a few security things ironically enough that i need to properly double check first before i can actually move one of them ahead if that makes sense i don't want to say anything too much in case my students are watching okay well yeah. they might be yeah. <laughs> um but other than that that's been kind of like my main thing of a lot of things that I had in the pipeline, but kind of need to finish before I go on to doing other stuff, if that makes sense. Sure. So it's it's all that sort of stuff, really. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's okay. going OK. It's going to be OK, hopefully. <laughs> and and the, the, for well. those of you that don't recall from last week, don't forget if you have an opportunity to look over Renara's Patreon. No, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was gonna do it. Still. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, but if 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 people would like to, then cool. Yeah, it's a thing. Still need to work on that, don't you? Okay, well. Oh, get in it. <laughs> so moving on, I want to say a quick hello to to Raven Main. Thank you, Raven, for being here. Magmorta, as Yay. always, keeping the channel calm. Thank you so much. I saw Astral Nomad just said hello. Hey, long time no see. Welcome back. Good to see you. Um, One more small thing. Yeah, of course. Also. I felt so out of water for this because that game was released the year I was born. <laughs> so I, feel, I was like, I have never seen any of those clips until now. So I just was like, uh, what is this? Uh, and why is it in my Star Fox game? No. Uh, it was just a bit sort of like weird and so if I, I don't know it was like that was the first time me seeing those close clips ever in my life because oh i never gosh. played the game until now i'm so sorry everyone it's okay to make so, you all feel old <laughs> astral for, for the intro was based off of resident evil the original resident evil released in 1996 so yeah uh yeah. crap not feel <laughs> thank you for that renard sorry <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all right. Uh, okay, let's check in on the other side of the world. Let's come back towards the U.S. Misty, how has your week been? Mm. It's been okay. Just stressed about a lot of things. I felt sorry that. to hear. Life things. Mm. Frustrated. Um, eh, just hoping for something better. <laughs> well, I hope your family's not. You're not letting your family get to you because I know that was a topic last week. Mm. Uh. That's fine. It's mainly just me stressing about whether I'm going to get to do certain things on time, which I may not get to, so. Gotcha. 
Well, it's priorities ridiculous. are priorities, and hopefully everything works out. So I'm thank you for sure. being here. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. Um, okay. All right. Well, um, thanks again. Let's go over and check in with El Dorino. Uh, Dorino, how are you doing Hi. this week? Hi. Hmm. Okay, great. Thanks for, for, for your input. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, um, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm very good. I'm wearing a very fun shirt that uh, is Stranger Things based. So if you are listening, come over to our YouTube and check out my <laughs> awesome Stranger Things postcard that says greetings from the upside down on the back. Um, no, uh, this week I actually did not do like anything voice acting related nothing at all i i needed a i needed a break for a little while because mm-hmm. i was uh i was going pretty hard there for a while looking for auditions um doing tiktok videos um trying to teach myself like video editing software writing i was just i was doing a whole a whole bunch and um i started to get like too close to the work and that was making me really anxious mm-hmm. about shit so i just i was like i need a i need a like weeks break or so uh to kind of reevaluate what i'm doing and and um just take a general breather so cool um i was very excited though when you sent me the uh, script for the intro and uh, <laughs> you mentioned resident evil because i loved the original game and yes the voice acting was atrocious <laughs> um so i'm i'm pretty glad though that I, uh, you uh, uh slotted me in as wesker although i think you i think one of my lines was missing at the end it did I, yeah I, I caught it because come this way so i keep in mind that i woke up at about five in the morning to get this done because i didn't have all the pieces uh, just yet and, and i think it just but it, it, i wasn't pointing <laughs> fingers at our <laughs> um so i it just in my sleepiness i missed it i'm i'm actually planning on releasing the whole thing on youtube the way that it is uh, I need yeah. to talk to my editor about filling in those intentionally blanks that you all saw, but hopefully none of the viewers saw. And, and you know, we'll see what we can do with that. But I figured, since I already put in the work, what the hell? Yeah, might as well. Yeah. No, it's, uh, otherwise, um, what else have I done this week? Um, I've been watching Breaking Bad for the first time. Ooh, good mm-hmm. show. Um, super, super good. Um, to the point where I'm like... <laughs> I'm watching it at work and like, <laughs> I, I, I have my own office so no one else is with me okay. um, and, and my door is always closed but yeah there's some parts in there that just make me like physically cringe yes. because of the material and you, so you probably like if you were to be walking past my office at the right time you'd probably hear something like Ugh. So, uh, yeah, um, otherwise, uh, no, I just, uh, just been relaxing and, uh, we spent a ton of money yesterday on stuff that we needed for our apartment and new clothes, like my shirt, which is amazing. Yeah. So. And a lava lamp. Oh. <laughs> and a lava lamp. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so we were, we were at Spencer's and, um, I was, we were just looking around kind of uh, just wasting time essentially. And, uh, we, I saw a lava lamp that had like a synth wave uh, aesthetic to it with the palm trees and the like the linear whatever you want to call it in the background. So I looked I looked at it and I looked over at my girlfriend and she's like, just get it. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so we got that. And then um, I actually have. Uh, I'm not going to be around next week, but um, hopefully on my Twitter or somewhere else, you'll see another shirt that I'm getting that um, I I won't say too much about it, but everyone will want to have a change of pants for when they view this picture because you will shit your original ones. Oh, God. Okay. Well, that's going to be a hard one to top. So thank you for that, Dorino. (laughs) My brain immediately went to challenge accepted. I'm not sure that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I always have two pairs of pants. (laughs) Um, so personally, uh, you know, I, I've, I've been paying attention to, to J show clips. I haven't gotten a, a script from him in a while. Um, and, and Ray, if you're out there, Ray, uh, feel free to talk to me. We can figure this out. Uh, he, he basically put, he's very down on himself because his channel isn't going in the projection that he's going. So, um, he looks like he may abandon it. So. You know what? Sometimes it happens. These projects are just going to go away and, and, and you won't be able, you know, to, to participate in them again. But, uh, 
I mean, like I said, if I'm, I'm going to try to reach out and say uh, what we can work out, but it's yeah. a shame. It was nice to have to have uh, a gig. Uh, on the other side, uh, somebody approached me on 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 a part, and I decided to put in for it. And that's probably going to be a conversation for next week, only because of the way that it was approached. It's one of those, hey, I'd like you to you know give this a shot, but I want you to do it in Casting Call Club, and it's. It's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I don't know if I want to go down that road. But um, otherwise, yeah, it, I, I wanted to put together the Resident Evil thing. I had, you know, I, we, we've talked about fixing some dubs, and that's the first thing that came to mind for me because it was such a good inspiration when, you know, when I was younger when it comes to all the scary games and stuff that I play. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much been my week. Nice. I actually uh -oh, I do Misty. have something. Sure. I actually do have something that I wanted to mention because you brought it uh, with the whole J Show clip situation. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I did have a, a a client approach me for like give some YouTube video narration, basically uh, what I've been looking for, and I did it for like a week. It was gonna be really good and pay and everything, like exactly what I needed during this time where hmm. things have just been really crazy, mm -hmm. and yet. It didn't work out as always. Those never work out for me because uh, uh, I, I don't know. It's like I, I was going fine. And then suddenly I'm seeing that uh, by the time I got off work, uh, we had a whole system where I could see like the scripts and whether someone recorded for them. All the scripts had been like recorded like before I got off work. I'm like, hmm. okay, so you like, do you need my services anymore? What's going on? It's like, oh, I just assumed like you just couldn't do them or something. I'm like, well, I mean, I have work in the morning. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I was, I was going to do them. I told them I would do them in the evening. Right. And that's what I had been doing. And yet, I don't know, I guess they were like in such a freaking rush that they couldn't consult me and they just got someone else to do them. And, and so, yeah, I guess now it's like, well, 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 we'll, we'll do some other channel and we'll let you know. So it's like, okay, I guess I won't be doing this anymore. Yay. That, there goes that hope. Yeah. Uh, nice. That yeah. really needed it. So, um, Shame, yeah, I'm sorry to hear. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> when it comes to the product, most people want it now, now, now. This is why those that dedicate, you know, 100% of the work seem to be able to get it a lot better. Hopefully, you'll be able to work something out with them and, 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 and work on it in the future. Definitely do want to see how this goes for next week. So, is that a puppy I see? It's, it's a cat. cat. It's, it's a cat. cat. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just seeing oh a little bit. God. Look at those eyes. Oh my gosh. Hi. I see an N eye. Oh, it's because I'm looking at the at the Colby podcast circle and the circle no. only shows like <laughs> like a little bit like Phantom of the Opera cat down there. Um, oh, she's adorable. Okay. She, he, they are adorable. Very this cute. This is my girlfriend's cat. This is Cheshire. Uh-huh. Oh, love that. So actually I was about to say hello and welcome to to Dave, how do you say your last name? Oh, it's lands of fame lands I, of fame. the way i always say it's uh, lands of fame i always say uh it sounds exactly how it's spelled okay mm -hmm. works for me i, I and apologize for not asking ahead of time <laughs> but yeah Lord. before yeah. we get into your journey and everything else we'd like to check in to see how your week has been uh busy actually it's been a couple of very busy months uh unfortunately not too voice acting related i uh, a couple months ago very early this year i moved into a house with my girlfriend mm -hmm. uh it's been extremely busy but it's been the good kind of busy it's just been uh, fixing things up furnishing the house uh, kind of getting things in order um i'm back you know aside from also voice acting i also i also do freelance writing on and off Ooh, okay. um and that's you know that's been working out really well um only just recently in fact funny you mentioned just yesterday we actually, I got my booth finally put up together. We got the lights strung up. I've got some of my uh, my microphone, my interface in there. It's just now just a matter of just getting things connected. And we're looking at um, how I can actually turn my PC, because it's really close to my PC, but I turn that into my uh, uh, editing room. So mm. I, can just, well, I just walk right out my booth and right there. The more I streamline the process, the easier it's going to be and the faster it's going to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I mean, like I, I show my booth. My booth's right behind me for the most part. So if and I've got, I go from there to here oh, to that's edit. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then Vernara is showing off that she is in her booth. I am in. I am yeah. in the box. <laughs> I have a box. I am in the not the TARDIS. Wrong one. That's yours. The movie. That's mine. Yeah, that's one back here. Uh, only because a little four or five foot four foot place. You know, I feel like bigger. It's bigger in the inside. So that's why we just put the TARDIS blanket on and we enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, very cool. And, and I look forward to to hopefully seeing more stuff out of you but let, let me ask you how your journey has gone so how did you get started with with voice acting really good question um i would kind of say that my journey probably like a lot of people i would say that like uh my journey kind of started i think well when i like well when i was a kid because i was that kid who grew up doing like weirdo voices like all the time and people were like oh man you do so many good impressions but it never occurred to me it never occurred to me that you could turn that into a career because I always kind of thought like you had to be, you have to be in LA. Mm -hmm. You have to be in LA if you ever want that kind of career in voiceover. Um, oh God, I would say that I would say that maybe around six years ago is when I actually started taking it seriously because then I find out because I'm from um, I'm from Illinois, I'm from the Chicagoland area, and I find out very close to where I live. There's a place called Acting Studio Chicago. Mm. And they actually were having classes about voiceover. And I just thought, go for it. Just try it out. And you realize, like, oh, you actually can, with the advent of, of being online and, and seeing as the technology just keeps improving over time, mm -hmm. uh, you can make a viable career out of this. And it's kind of a, it was kind of amazing. Um, but, yeah, I... I would say that my career has been on and off for like the better part of five years. Okay. Okay. So it was it, was it six years ago that you decided to start taking classes or, or was that a little bit closer to now? No, uh, it was about six years ago when oh. I started taking classes, when I first started taking classes. So um, only I because could, I think most yeah. of us here haven't actually taken anything like that. Do they recommend like yeah. equipment or anything or, or how, how does that go about? Well, I, so it's kind of it's it's interesting you mentioned that because so the the um, there's a couple there's like three three really good uh, trainers that I had mm -hmm. in acting studio in Chicago I had uh, Dave LaFell who did who's mostly known for doing a lot of commercial work there was a guy named Jeff Lupitin um, who had done some video games has also been known I think he actually was also known uh, for a while he was like one of the cockroaches from the old school uh, raid raid. Uh, pesticide oh, no. commercials. Okay. <laughs> I um, thought that was going to be and Shadow Legends for like a split second. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Speaking of which, this episode of Cole Read the no! Podcast oh, God, is yeah. not sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. There we go. Um, this one was uh, Deb Dotzer. And Deb Dotzer, I think the last thing I saw her kind of was like, oh, she trained me. She's playing like uh, Ida's mother from the Owl House. Okay. Which is like, oh. um, but yeah, I, I had some really great trainers. But yeah, when you're asking about like, you know, do they talk about equipment? They actually do say like, you don't need a lot to start with. Um, they all kind of said the same thing. Like, you know, if you really want to shoot for it just to start uh, Blue Yeti, they usually say like, you know, Blue Yeti is oh. a good place to start. Interesting. Um, like, like they said, if you can get like Blue Yeti audacity and if you can fairly make your room kind of like quiet and not too much reverb, you've got like a good start mm -hmm. yeah and i like the fact they're like you know don't throw don't throw everything in all at once you know what i mean because yeah. you have to see like you know can you do the process right mm -hmm. yeah gotcha so so did you personally start with the blue yeti or, or did you go for a different type of mic oh man my, my time with blue yeti um <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like Blue Yeti was like it it was the microphone I did my first and probably one of my biggest uh voice acting jobs uh when I shortly uh, finished my classes. Mm -hmm. Um but no, like Blue Yeti, I mean I, I Good thing this isn't sponsored by Blue Yeti. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Although if you did want to, we're around. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I went through like four microphones. Gotcha. I went through four no. microphones because the Blue Yeti microphone. Hmm? Oh, three. Okay. My, my girlfriend just said, she's like, don't <laughs> do it three. Correct. It was three. Oh, that's awesome. Um, uh, it was like three microphones because those things, um, 
they're very they're they're great for starting out mm -hmm. they're not very durable um mm -hmm. and like okay. the wear and tear happens really fast um god like the work i think like the worst time i remember having like having to have it break on me driving out miles into the city to find try to find a blue yeti just to finish this like one job that i had yeah. and i mm -hmm. had to, all that was left is I, I had to take the one from the display case oh. that was the only one they had Gotcha. Oh and the guy was actually really nice. He's like, "Oh man, I'll I'll give it to you at a discount." I'm like, "Yes, please," because he's like, "We've had that thing forever." So I'm just here looking at and mine it... sadly. Like, I'm so sorry. You don't need to hear this. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I've had mine for like over eight years. They don't point. know what they're talking about. It's, it's still right. kicking. It's still kicking. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't it, it's it, like, I don't know, like a like a energy wave that I put out that just like shorts those things out immediately. But. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's what's even worse is if you're in the middle of a project, you can't change mics because it's going to change your sound. So yeah, yeah I could totally exactly. yeah, I could totally understand. When, and when I and when, I'm not kidding you, when I when I use that like display case thing, I was able just when I finished it. Short it out again. No, oh my God. Oh, wow. I'm not kidding you. It died like immediately when I was done. Yeah, wow. insane. I, that was the moment I realized, like, I if I really want to do this for real, I have to get like, I have to get like, I have to go up. You know gotcha. what I mean? Yeah. I have to get like a good, a better mid-range microphone. I think mm -hmm. I think three out of the four of us here has started with a blue yeti. So I mean, you're in good company when it comes to. I it's it's a very popular brand. It's very it's you know, it'll pick up everything. And but that's the thing that you have to be careful because it will pick up everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I know yes. Renara with her lovely headset mic, which she started with, and I know you're still wearing yeah. the headset. Well, it, yeah. Well, this is actually. Uh, I had a very similar thing of. I've tried. I've had these. This brand of headphones for when I since I started voice acting, and my original ones that were like ten years old broke like last year. So I had. I went. On, I had to go to eBay to find these exact ones because you know I'm not going for anything else other than those exact ones that I've been using. Because headphones, ironically enough, I think have su have a connotation with the microphone because each headphone makes things sound different so depending mm. on the type of headphone you have mm -hmm. that can change how you hear things so i was like i'm so used to these i i and i managed to find one one listing for a lot i paid like 40 pounds for them it was stupid because they were like the only ones left <laughs> okay it's not bad really yeah i mean we're, we're all creatures of, of habit yeah we all i'm mm. sure we all understand <laughs> oh all right Dave. so there you are you you're you've already done a couple of, so it was you said it was one of your biggest roles. Is that what your favorite role that you did? What was it, if you don't mind me asking? Problem. Um, it was almost kind of like it was weird. It was. It felt like it was. I feel like I was meeting like kind of a um, like a like a voice acting bucket list. I didn't even know I had. Um, because I grew up in terms of video games. I grew up with. It's so funny that you were playing like Resident Evil in the voice acting because the, the video games I play like around that time were like old. PC pen and paper, uh, not pen and paper, uh, old PC uh, point and click adventure mm -hmm, games mm -hmm. that always had like, that always had like really good voice acting. They did, absolutely. Like, this, like, 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 yeah, like stuff like old school Sierra and LucasArts mm -hmm. games. Um, and for me, like, I'd always wanted to voice in that. And I had the chance, um, this, I always thought this was kind of a funny story, but like, one of the first roles I got was uh, for a game called Tales. And uh, it's on Steam. It's mm -hmm. like it's still on sale. Um, I play the role of Merlin. What cracks me up so much is that the company, I forget the name of the company, but the company that made it, that made the game, is actually based in the UK. So I'm like, are you trying to tell me that I actually do a better Merlin Merlin <laughs> than any other like you than the UK actors? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the developer um, is Ape Marina, by the way. I, I just brought it up on Steam and I linked it in the chat. Cool. Um, yeah, it's I, I got to play Merlin. He had like tons and tons of lines. It was funny because like it was my favorite, but it was also super difficult because this was me. Like I had no no booth, just the microphone, just oh, wow. me in a small room. And this was also at a time where. <laughs> I did this whole thing during the summer and where I was living in the summer, 
uh, it was July. Mm-hmm. And my neighborhood likes to treat the entire month of July like the 4th of July weekend. <laughs> oh, God, do I yep. know that. I know that I feeling. had to voice at very specific times in small increments. I had to work around everyone else's fireworks show because, like, again, that, that Blue Yeti picked up everything. Mm-hmm. I think it took me, and I think I had like well over a hundred lines to do. And this is me also uh, uh, speaking about perfectionism. I was, I did like well over, I think like over 125 lines and I did three takes for every single line. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I can't blame you. I know that, yeah, yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah, um, but I mean, I it because you want to, you want to put the different inflections in, and you want to, you want to make sure to convey as mm-hmm. much as you can. Yeah, you want to keep the cl- the customer happy, plain mm-hmm. and simple. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And he was he was great. He was really nice. Uh, he brought me on for a couple more projects, oh, uh, cool. mostly to kind of do like a variation of my mer- variation of my Merlin voice, which I would call um what I call it. It's like uh, my version of doing a young, I think a very young John. No, <laughs> very nice. Yeah. Fair, no. Okay. To be fair, that that is kind of what the English like to hear with Merlin. So I I see why. <laughs> I see why. <laughs> Take him on the resident. No, be, no, nothing like it's like it's like. <laughs> and I'm not on me. <laughs> yeah, the we're Dick not, Van Dyke. We're not going down the Dick Van Dyke <laughs> levels of yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay if I is that the second time yeah. in a, in two shows that we brought up Dick Van Dyke? I think it Probably. is. Probably. So, yeah. I, feel, I feel like it, yeah. Oh, very cool. So I, No, no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean yeah, to reminds me of a conversation. Yeah, it just reminds me of a conversation that I had one time when I was when I when I was actually when I actually traveled to London, I was talking to a guy there. And um and he 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 pushed me. He's like he's like he's like, no, I want he's like he's like, he's like no, I want to, I want to hear your I want to hear what you think British people sound like. And I'm like, right. okay. And I did like the whole Dick Van Dyke thing. So I said, how do, American, how do Americans sound to you? It's like, well, Americans sound they're usually like this. It's usually, hey, forget about it. Or, hey, partner. And I'm like, yep, that's it. That's all we got. Indeed. We're either, we're either cowboys or gangsters. That's it. Well, and exactly. I'm surprised. I'm surprised the Alabama redneck didn't come out of that because I would have loved to have it heard. Depends what it depends on where yeah. in England you go and ask that question. To be <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair but we enough. We won't go into that. <laughs> so, Dave, I'm curious. How did you? How did you end up as Merlin? Where did the job come from? If you don't mind me asking. You know what? Funny enough, that actually came up. I think I was. Because I I hadn't joined any like uh, voice acting uh, discords at that point. I think it was just mm-hmm. purely through through chance. I, no, I think it was actually I was regularly using the uh, 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 what's it called? Because I have it right here. Uh, I was using the voice acting club's uh, oh, okay. chief website, yeah, and, and yeah. that's where I found it. And the guy just posted. I sent my thing in. He re- he really liked me, and yeah, that's that's how it went off. Wow! Uh, it was kind of a it was it was amazing how fast it happened. Um, and I and ever since then, like I, I regularly use the voice acting club website. I'm still I'm still part of their Discord. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been um, I'm sure like a lot of people have said the same thing, but it's like I cannot under I cannot overstate how much of a resource that place is. It's amazing. Yeah. Like if you just Hurry. want really just really good practical technical advice, if you want advice about like where to go for training, where to get your your equipment booths, your your booth set up, like mm-hmm. how to do your auditions, all all sorts of stuff. It's it's amazing. It's I would almost say like it's an it's almost an intimidating amount of information, but it's so readily available. <laughs> all right. You're not wrong, and it's funny because every guest that comes in, I swear I look, I always look, and we always have the VAC in common. So it, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, we're all members here, so we we totally understand. Um, and, and I know for like for, for my booth stuff, I got a lot of the information from there and, and I'm just waiting for like certain sending things to come up. So I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to, to investigating it a little bit more now that we're, you know, I think we're all trying to get a little bit more serious. Um, so yeah. very, very cool. So it, out of, out of side of the, of the tales Merlin role, um, is there anywhere else we might've heard you? Cause I, I heard a game earlier when I was walking back from, from grabbing my PB and J that, uh, Dorino was making fun of me about. So Gloomhaven, I think, came up. 
Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a series. I I don't know too much about it, but like it's a series called Gloomhaven. I think it's kind of a board game, but it actually has like um, uh, you can download an app, and I think it has like sound effects and voice tracks and stuff like that to kind of like add into more of the. Um, I just like adds more of the uh, of like the ambiance. I think. Oh. Uh, See, there's a there's a digital and, version of that game because I got two buddies that are really yeah. really into it. So I I was very curious if it was. But you're on the more on the board side game. Uh, as a sound I, effect yeah cool yeah i think I'm, I'm i'm like i'm on more like the board game side of things um i don't know exactly like what what adventure you'll find me in because i'm an unnamed i'm an unnamed character mm -hmm. and that's uh it was just called um oh no i did it was two character two unnamed characters one was for uh toad folk and hog folk and mm -hmm. that was where i kind of like got to play with my voice a lot more like for my 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 toad folk i got to be like way more croaky mm -hmm. uh my hog folk i got to be more gruff but i would like intersperse it with like snorting and stuff like that <laughs> so it, for the most part are you are you because i mean you've been doing voices since you were six are you very skilled when it comes to uh playing with your voice or are you more do you have more of a set uh, mm -hmm. Like you know, for when it comes to me, I generally do like the 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 older brother type, or if not, you know, the gruff bad wow. guy. What's what's what would you consider your niche to be? If you have one. Oh, that's such a really that's such a really good question. Um, <laughs> I would say that I think like I I feel like I kind of have a niche, um, but I also am trying to be more open to trying out different things and and changing and just like you know what else can this particular what else can i do with my voice outside of what i would consider like a wheelhouse gotcha um but i think what's also really important to me because i feel like i could do like growling voices gruff voices creature voices i feel like I'm, i feel like i could be really good playing like um uh, uh slimy greedy merchants and stuff like that mm. um but so one of the things I've also learned that is is really important, and I only learned this like very very recently, is that you know you can have all the different kinds of voices you want. You can have you can sound any any way you want, but what's really important is the performance. Yes, you know um, that was something I learned from one of my trainers uh, recently, Jun Yoon. Like he really like pushed, drilled into me. Like you can have. You can have like the deepest baritone growls, but if you cannot make people believe it, it's just not going to work out for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, and, and, yes. and listening to somebody being out of range is very difficult because you know, you know what they're going for, but you kind of feel for them because you can't one hundred percent get there. Uh, so totally yeah. understand. I, Go ahead. Question? Oh no, I was because you just like you reminded me like another story. Sure. Um, when I was actually, when I was going to those acting studios, Chicago, was like, you know, you have like a whole bunch of different people who are in there. Like a, we had a couple people who are like, you know, veteran actors, stuff like that. We had this one guy who had this really deep, rich baritone, like very, like from here, mm -hmm. you know, he always sounded like even just like conversation. But when you put him in front of the microphone, it was Stilted, it was awkward it was weird like you can tell he's oh, trying like yeah. he doesn't really know how to perform and that was the thing that afterwards like this is like after well after class i was talking to uh dave lafell and he's like he's like yeah you get these guys who had these amazing voices it's these beautiful natural voices and because they're so um they get so they overthink it. Like mm -hmm. they're, too, they're, tr they're so yeah. trapped in their own yeah. brains that they can't like just let that come out natural. It's when you get into the booth, there's that there's that switch of kind mm. of like it's that environmental switch that your brain kind of goes ah. It's like walking through a door and forgetting what you're <laughs> what you're thinking yeah. about. But there is I I, mm. I can attest there is some sort of and especially what. I can I can see I can see it being even more amplified in an actual studio as well because I don't mm. think I don't think any of us he any of any of any of us here have actually been in a studio studio yet, but I can imagine the whole going into there and it's just if you've not had the experience or the have been in that environment before that can be overwhelming and can affect the voice if, and how you how you project and how you perform. It's like stage fright, except mic fright, I guess you could yeah. call it. 
It's funny. Um, it, that's 100% right. Like get, getting behind a mic is essentially getting up on stage in front mm -hmm. of people. It's it's just the, the, the mentality of it. You know, in your mind, people are going to hear this. And then like I, I kind of run into the same thing still um, like some well, most days uh, I'll get in the booth and I'll know exactly what I want to do and be able to do it right off the bat. But sometimes I just walk in. I'm like, I forgot how to be a human. Um, <laughs> that was me for this intro. I won't even yeah. lie. It was it was the thing I walked in and went, oh, I oh, don't know what fire. to do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just all about confidence, I feel. Well, and it is interesting because you, you hear people uh, all the time, like when uh, for some reason, like anytime you hear someone that makes like online content and they have like that kind of like very deep or like smooth voice, everyone's like, wow, you should totally narrate something. You'd be perfect for it. It's like, well, that's like the natural instinct for yeah. people to say that, like, oh, I'd love you should do you should do voice acting. You should do commercials or something. It's like, maybe maybe not <laughs> but it's funny because it's not even about the voice it's it's about just mm -hmm. how you can you can portray what you want to portray and what mm -hmm. as a, as a stage actor i can tell you i've gone through certain readings and they're like oh yeah i want you to do that line again and then my brain's going like how did i do that line and yeah. it just completely <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then i just for the rest of the time i'm cursed and i cannot deliver the line the same way so um <laughs> i i feel all of your pain trust me when it comes to this particular one <laughs> Um, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E. Um, I'm doing the whole thing. I'll put my hand up. Yeah. No, um, I'm pretty sure every one of us here has had a role that either has gotten away from us or that like has basically like either either you've passed passed by or you didn't get or whatever. Has there been a role that you've either auditioned for or not auditioned for and have and it's like bit you in the butt and you've gone, oh, I wish I had done this or uh, you wish you'd got. Is there like that one, the one that you that got away? I say. Well, man, there's probably been a few that like I like like totally can't I can't tell you off the top of my head because it's happened to like. I probably like all the time, but I can definitely say that like when I when I actually did get representation, I started getting like auditions from my agent. Uh, there was one for a commercial, and it was supposed to be like you're supposed to sound like an. What they call it? It's like it's oh, it's like a, a a commercial. It's a cartoon. You're supposed to sound like like an old turtle, and I can't tell you what that voice was, but I remember. I remember. Uh, I was so busy. I think I was doing other stuff. I let that slide. I was in the car. I was thinking about it. And then just like the voice came to me and I'm just doing the voice in the car. And afterwards, I'm just like, oh, just like, I have it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I'm not yeah. saying I could have got it, but like, oh my God, that's such a contender for a voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. I remember one of the first things for Voices.com was a commercial called Tough Turtle Turf. Um, and, and they wanted it a very particular way. And after I hit that submit button, I'm like, Damn it! I should have done it this other way. And you can you can change it, but by that point, it, it was already heard. I couldn't I couldn't do it again. So I mm. I, I feel that pain too. Sorry, Renard. I learned. <laughs> no, it's fine. I learned it the hard way on um, when I've got Voices.com, where you where I, I had that like I I'd saved it open, and I didn't realize that that doesn't like save it. Like you have to kind of like have it on the submission part before it like allows you to submit those still. So I would spend like half an hour to an hour just perfecting something and then only for it to go up oh, the listing's gone or the list or whatever and they're going ah <laughs> yes you know <sighs> um how many, go ahead how many good i'm just just for like how many good takes have happened to people where you feel like you really kind of like oh man i've got it so good but then you like listen to the playback in your headphones and then like halfway through you hear a word and there's like a gawk somewhere and you're like, mother, no, <laughs> no, yeah. no, Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, my, my, no, my, 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 like... my clips or something. I hear like a technical thing and yeah. they're like, no, no, no. There's that little like, that little somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Pain. Yeah. I, I somehow get like really good takes and I'll listen back to it and either it clips really bad because I peaked or I'll hear like a car in the background or something or the cat pawing on the door, which has he's been enjoying doing no. lately for some <laughs> dickhead reason. Um, he knows your voice. So uh, I, 
I have a question oh. real quick. Sure. Um, so we were talking about this uh, shortly before the show because um, in your on your website, uh, your specialities are noted as guttural, growling, uh, deep boom, hoarse, etc. Um, as a purveyor of strange vocal techniques myself, I was wondering how you realize that you could do this and like what you do to kind of um, experiment with your own voice as opposed to um, your your natural speaking tone, how you go from speaking normally to speaking something gruff or, or whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's just like um, trying out different forms of breath control. Um, like one class, I another class I took, I think his name is Michael Schwabe. He's an, he's a guy who like teaches you about like using his techniques about like as a as a heavy metal performer, and just like how you can changing your your pattern of breathing, inhaling or exhaling, can just change like the pitch and the tone, and you just can bend and crack and like reform like your work your 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 voice into different things. Like, I think from that class, like, I learned I could do, I could do fairly well, I think. Um, there are, like, these shorts on Cartoon Network with a guy named Black Hat. So I can do, I feel like I can do, like, you know, Hello, man. Rachel's is me, you little pal. Yeah. yeah well, I'm siding over to destroy all the heroes in your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah. Can you, uh, what, what was so like, the, the teacher's name again? Michael what? I think it's, I think, and I could be completely wrong on this. I think it's Michael Schwabe. I think he's Schwabe. on Twitter. Schwabe. I could try to send you a link because I do follow oh, him. Absolutely. We'd, we'd appreciate um, it. I definitely do. Because because I, I brought, um, I, I was speaking about this a few weeks back um, about a guy who does that, who was a, a heavy metal vocalist that did singing, uh, belting, screaming. Um, and he taught how to you employ that in voice acting. I just, I could not remember his name for the life of me. Yeah. Uh, he was. Uh, he, I, I, I attended one of his classes online. It was like a couple of hours long, and he really does really break down like the things you can do with your voice. Uh, you know, he, he puts a huge emphasis on he puts a huge emphasis on like taking care of your throat, taking care of your voice. Not mm -hmm. very much. He's on that uh, of that where he's like, you know, if it starts to get tense, you don't do it because that's how you start hurting yourself. Things like that. Right. Um, his yeah. stuff is his stuff is amazing. Yeah, okay. we're we're huge proponents here. If it starts hurting, stop doing it. Because yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, find yeah. a find a different but way I, of getting that voice without it hurting you. It just did was like I can hear it like right here, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but it but I know it it doesn't put a strain on it. Like I don't have to like tense my neck to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it comes with practice. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Honestly, it comes with it comes with like a lot of practice. Um, you know, even doing the Merlin voice. You know, uh, you I could I could go for like a solid hour, hour and a half doing the Merlin voice. Um, but that's yeah. You just kind of like learn. You learn like just just good um, just good maintenance. Gotcha. Um, so you you've got a nice website. How did that come about? When did you decide really? that you needed your website? Oh gosh, I would say like I I think I decided like early like very late actually yeah like late last year oh, okay. is when I decided I needed a voice uh, a, a website. I think there was at a time, I think it was at a time like um, at least like roughly before I actually like went and seriously tried to get a get a house for myself. Um, like I said, I had been. <laughs> Uh, I would say that like I, I started trying to voice act six years ago and for the last five years I've been starting ever since. <laughs> um, mostly because like, you know, life stuff gets in the way, work gets mm -hmm. in the way, jobs get in the way, just events get in the way, just certain things where it's just like, you know, you kind of have to take that, kind of put that on the wayside, just pick it up and you kind of continue continue on. Mm -hmm. But every time I kept picking it up, I always kind of felt like, well, I feel like I can do more with it. Like how can I expand on that? Um, right. and one thing I thought was like, you know, make yourself a website. And I remember like, I, I went so crazy into it. Like I tried to figure out like, oh, I'm going to make a, a WordPress website and it's going to look really good. I'm going to go on Skillshare. I'm going to figure out like, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. And then you realize 
you can just go to a you can go to a website called Card. You can make it practically for free. You pay a little bit extra every year to actually have it as a dom to get just registered to a domain name, which you can get from GoDaddy.com. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did yeah. that. Um, uh, again, one of my trainers, Jun Yoon, he just said like most of this stuff you don't have to you can throw out, and it only just has to be these like three or four different things, and then that's it. Nice. Thank you, by the way, about the website, because I actually feel like it is so super bare bones. I love the bare bones. Bare I mean, bones is really in right now. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Sleek. It's yeah, called yeah. it's called sleek and efficient, which which I really absolutely like because it's all like right there. So great. didn't they say yeah. something along the lines of like it, you got like the first like fifteen seconds to snag a client, basically. Like they, yeah. when they first see your stuff, you've got to have just basically like here's my stuff. Like, yeah. so make it easy for people to find stuff. Um, and then after that, then if they're interested, they'll go into seeing more. Because I know we've seen loads of different websites from loads of different people. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, it, I, I like it. I just just randomly went, oh, I'm going to now look that up now and just casually being nosy and looking through it now. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because the first thing that you see is you see your face. You see what you can do, and you get both of your demos up, which is great. So, like, yeah. you, know, you can capture that within the first 15 seconds. I see Misty has got has got the name up. Michael Shalby? Shalby? Schwab. Yeah, I put the, the website in the host chat, too. Oh, His perfect. Website. I'll I'll go ahead and link that while we got it. Um, so we, we, we're coming up on the last about five minutes of this. So let me, I'm going to, I'm going to go down my particular questions that I always like to ask our guests. Dave, if you could talk to yourself six, you know, when you were starting this voice acting journey six years ago, what advice would you have for yourself? Um, I would tell myself that um, it's going to take a while. It is going to take a while, but it's going to be completely worth it. And uh, you're going to be really amazed. You're going to see you're, you're going to be you're going to be blown away by where you see yourself in six years. Love it. Now let me turn that question around and ask you if you were to if somebody approaches you and say what advice can you give me as a new person what would it be? It's a really good one. Um gosh, I think I would actually say that if you if you really wanted to start bare bones if you ever wanted to start. Uh this one I learned uh from an interview with Ian McKellen and he said that everything he ever learned about acting he said one of the very first things he did he just opened up the newspaper and just read it out loud. Yes. Um, and yeah. I would just say the mm. same thing. I would say just grab anything written down, a book, a magazine, look at a website, anything, just read it out loud. And, um, you know, if it's more newsy, you know, try to make it sound very, you know, try, try to uh, match your emotions to the tone of the piece. You know, if it's very, if it's very professional and dry, be professional. If it's uh, more dramatic, if you're doing like an audio book, then yeah, you know, Give voices to each of the characters, you know, and just do that as much as you can. And if you find that you're having a blast doing it, then, yeah, I would say uh, you might want to think about pursuing this as a career. It's funny you That's... mentioned that because during during bedtime when my kids were much, much younger, I'm going to say like 17 years ago or so, um, I would read them Harry Potter. I went through the whole series and every character had a voice and I loved doing it. So, <laughs> yeah. No, that's cute. Uh, get our, our, our co-hosts. Do we have any questions for Dave? And then while we're, we're putting this together, Dave, if you have any questions for us also, we'd love to hear. Renara, do you have anything? Or Misty? Possibly, but you've got to give me a little bit of time to formulate the words into the right order. So if anyone else has a gun, <laughs> anyone else, I don't think, go I know ahead, Dorino but... has one, but... I always have the always same question. Yeah. So... Uh, most important question of the interview, by the way. Um, what is your favorite pizza topping? Oh, that <laughs> question. Like I said, most important one. That question. This they, interview's over. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new one. No, oh, no, that one. How okay. dare you, sir? Thank no. you for that. Oh gosh, I. I would honestly say that, you know what, I will go with the classic, and I will go with uh, pepperoni. Oh, mm, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I see Misty doing that happy <laughs> dance down there. <laughs> uh, I'll break. throw my, one, my, last, my, my last one in. Um, if you could voice any, like, anything, like, if, what would be your dream role to audition for and get? Like, what would Oof. be your, the, like, the best 
like the, the your dream role. Oh, that's <laughs> such a good one. Um, if I had a dream role, if I had a dream role, uh, if there was one kind of voice that I would love to play, it would almost be like in terms of tonally, hmm. uh, I would love to do um, either a video game, which is which is fun, and a uh, doing an animated series would be such a blast. I would love to play, and I think almost a lot of voice actresses, I would love to play a villain. <laughs> Not just any villain. I would love to play a villain who is uh, loud, who is, who, you know, who laughs very loud, who talks very loud, who growls and snarls. Um, I think, like, one impression that I would do in the car all the time just for fun was Aku from Samurai Jack, you know? Because yes. he would have yeah. um, this a huge voice all the time. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> I, I, you okay. know, Dave, I have to ask, was, was Mark Hamill an inspiration for you? Cause I hear a lot of Mark Hamill in that mm. voice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it's so, it, it's so funny. You say Mark Hamill because, um, I think on VAC, I, I think on VAC, there's an in joke that I've heard over and over again where people kept saying, like, uh, you can tell someone's a pure amateur where they're like, hey, man, you want to hear my Joker impression? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mark Hamill's Joker impression? Yes. Which is funny. Which is fun. And I like the fact that they say that because, like, a lot of the people are just, they're like, let's face it, guys, we all did this. Yes, 100%. We all did our version of the Joker growing Absolutely. up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I would say... Yeah, I would say that Mark Hamill was a huge influence, especially uh, when I because I would I watched the behind the scenes of Batman the animated series, and I would see there's Mark Hamill. You know, everyone else is in their seats, just kind of going over their lines, but Mark's the only one. He's standing up, mm -hmm. and he's like, you know, he's shaking his, you know, he's shaking his head. He's a, he's a, he's wringing his hands. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's just he's thrown everything into this microphone. And the, the one thing that he said that always sticks to me, he says, you can do things as a voice actor that you would never do on camera or on the stage. You can make decisions that are so completely out there, but the microphone is just picking up that. So you can be as, you know, pull your hands out, like really get into it. And I think that's something that I, that I really love doing uh, when I get into the mic, when I get into the booth. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I know big inspirations for me are always Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy. And I think most everybody who, who grew up in the 90s and, and had that little time to watch Batman the Animated Series went down that same road. So you're in good company yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Co-host, anything else before we start doing our sign-offs? I see Nodders okay. is a no. Dave, any questions for us before we sign off? Um, I think just the one question I would have for everybody is like, uh, was there like a particular performance or a particular game or movie or show that like clicked for you and just said like, I would love to do something like this. I have one. I have one. I have several. I have many. <laughs> Pick one, Renara. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay, yeah, fine. Um, the, the main one would be Mass Effect because of Jennifer Hale. Which is a great uh, one. I'm right. wearing my N7 hoodie today as nice! well. Nice! Yeah. Shout out to N7. Very <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, Misty. No. Do I have to? It's just a simple yes. fan thing. Yes. It's like, well, obviously, like Harley Quinn. It's just that like, works. like, it's a big yeah. thing yeah. for me. Absolutely. Like, That's a great I love, one. Uh, yeah. I love it so much. Dorino? <laughs> my mine as strange as it may be is a uh, trevor from grand theft auto 5 oh, <laughs> when i realized i could be a full-blown psycho and get paid for it i was like I'm in. um i will say it was either one of the queen king's quest or quest for glory games john reese davis did a whole thing and he was spectacular and when i heard him it's like that's what i want to do because you know very rich voice very good i loved it i loved it Dave, mm -hmm. Dave, thank you so much for being our guest. This is that's it. This is the whole hour. Thank you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't too bad, I hope. Um, so next week, Dorino's going to be out. Um, our intro is going to be Renara's. Thank you, Renara, yeah. for pointing yourself out. 
Um, so if you have any questions or, or if you want to just talk to us, uh, you can email us, Cole read the podcast at gmail.com, Cole read the podcast at gmail.com. We have a discord open. You're welcome to join. We are generally playing video games on there. We are there available. If you have any questions for us, we have a nice network in order to be able to, to reach out. In addition, if you have any auditions or any audio you would like to, to listen to and give you feedback on, we will be more than happy to do that live here on the show. And we've done it to each other and we are always mm -hmm. very constructive. Mm -hmm. Renara, I, you always do our sign off and, and, and we'll see what you're gonna do today. So please. I'm gonna, I'm keeping the ball rolling from a few weeks, I think it was last week where I opened it up to everyone to say one oh, piece, no. one thing, and I'm keeping, <laughs> I am keeping you guys to that. So I would like everyone here to come up with one little nugget of wisdom to end and I shall then tie everything up. Dave, you'll be second to last. You're, you're, you're involved okay. in this one too. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. You can't get away with it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll go first. If you fall, make sure you get back up and you keep going. Mm-hmm. Uh, keep, keep being confident. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Misty? I'd say don't be afraid to try new things as wild or as crazy as they may seem. You never know what may happen. Dave? Drink your water. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you just took Dorino's line. Love it. He's so up in the water beside himself. <laughs> <laughs> and then just I'm gonna but I'm gonna tie this up quickly before Eldorado has a revolt. Um <laughs> no, I would say even though similarly kind of similar to Eldorado. <laughs> Good. Oh my god, you guys all took it. That's very, th th I'm speechless. He's gone. Once. This is weird. We lost Torino for those of you on the we podcast. He just left. No, lost okay. the boy. <laughs> Learn to rest. Learn to rest, but not to step backwards. Keep going step by step and know that anything you do on your path is good enough for you. You are not beholden to anyone else but yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. We are all learning and just every, every little bit helps. Love okay. it. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll catch you all next time. Bye. 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 Drink water. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs>